to those fighting in Amhara, to those that call themselves the Fano, please know that your rejection of dialogue does not serve you well. Many in Amhara are passionate that their cause is just. If so, you should make those arguments through dialogue and not violence. The US policy towards the Horn of Africa has long been criticized for its shallow and ill-intentioned approach, lacking inclusivity and empathy. Recent remarks by the US ambassador, believed to have close ties to Abiy Ahmed, lack substance, thoughtfulness, and genuine concern. To those fighting in Amhara, to those that call themselves the Fano. In diplomacy, every word matters. The US ambassador's choice to refer to Fano supporters as those who call themselves Fano is not just disrespectful. It's outright demeaning and condescending, revealing his blatant bias. Fano represents a widespread movement across the Amhara region, born out of deep-seated grievances accumulated over years of mistreatment, ethnic profiling, ethnic cleansing, massacres, economic marginalization, and state-sponsored propaganda. Moreover, Abiy's declaration of war against the Amhara people in 2023 has made the life many Amharas miserable. The ambassador's dismissive tone towards Fano reflects a profound lack of understanding and empathy, tarnishing the principles of diplomacy and exposing his partiality. Such behavior is not just unacceptable, it's infuriating and unjust. Many in Amhara are passionate that their cause is just. If so, you should make those arguments through dialogue and not violence. What a condescending and patronizing statement. The Fano movement or rebellion in Amhara isn't a choice. It's a heavy burden forced upon the Amhara people. The atrocities, marginalization, and relentless hostility from the OPP and Abiy government towards the Amhara are widely acknowledged and extensively reported. This was never a matter of choice. The ambassador has the audacity to preach Fano about dialogue over violence, yet conveniently turns a blind eye to the harsh reality in Ethiopia, where engaging in meaningful dialogue with the Oromo Prosperity Abai government is virtually impossible. He shamelessly characterizes Amhara resistance as violence, distorting the truth once again. Amhara journalists, activists, politicians striving for peaceful means, along with Amhara members of parliament, are now languishing in Abiy's oppressive prisons, or have been forced to flee Ethiopia altogether due to the dire conditions. Eskinda, a renowned US-educated journalist and author, joined the resistance against injustice and oppression. He represents the epitome of individuals driven to such actions when all avenues for peaceful engagement are closed off, leaving people with no choice but to resist. Does the ambassador know that Abi jailed his own peace minister for criticizing Abi's role in derailing and sabotaging the peace negotiations with the OLF? Where is Tay now? Tay was fired from his job and is now languishing in prison on false charges of terrorism and anti-peace activities. It's unbelievable. To make matters worse, his family has been made homeless. What more evidence does the ambassador need to realize that Abi and the ruling party have no intention of negotiating? It just lip service. Let me be direct. To those in Aromia, the OLA, you made a genuine effort to reach a deal at the negotiating table in Dar es Salaam. Don't give up. Make the effort to rebuild trust and seek the peace for which there is overwhelming public support. Too many people are suffering as the fighting continues. The ambassador's double standards and bias are glaringly obvious. He characterizes the Amhara resistance as violent and refuses to acknowledge the need for negotiation. Yet he fails to apply the same labels to the OLF and TPLF in his speech. The State Department must be aware of this glaring bias. Antagonizing over 50 million Amharas as mere violent actors will not contribute to a constructive long-term US policy in any way. The ambassador's calculated use of language goes well beyond normal discourse delivering a clear and offensive message that directly insults the 50 million Amharas who support or sympathize with the Fano movement. His blatant partiality indicates a personal bias or potentially reflects official US government policy. 
Given the ambassador's close ties to Abiy Ahmed's Oromo Prosperity Party, it strongly suggests that this bias stems from the ambassador himself. This level of bias is unacceptable and deeply disrespectful to the Amhara community and their legitimate grievances. The ambassador's assertion that Fano is unwilling to negotiate appears disingenuous, particularly in light of Abiy Ahmed's documented reluctance to address the marginalization and violence against the Amharas. Calling Fano bellicose is a dishonest and unfair characterization. Successful negotiations require merit, transparency, and mutual compromise, as well as a genuine commitment to achieving peace and a willingness to consider diverse solutions. The ambassador's speech is riddled with lies, lacks depth, and comes across as disingenuous. It seems like he's just auditioning for how much he wants to please Abiy Ahmed. The breakdown of negotiations with the Oromo Liberation Front, OLF, can be attributed to Abiy's persistent refusal to compromise and his use of deceptive tactics, which the OLF did not fall for. Abiy's unwavering demand for complete submission and obedience is widely known, posing a significant barrier to constructive negotiations and lasting peace, a fact the ambassador fully understands. What about the Reuters investigative report accusing Abiy Ahmed of orchestrating a killing squad to silence opposition groups? Abiy Ahmed and Oromo Prosperity Party have imprisoned countless Amhara peaceful activists, journalists, public figures, business people and members of parliament in Ethiopia's most brutal prisons, where they endure torture, abuse and indefinite detention without due process, often on fabricated charges. Reports from CPJ, Human Rights Watch, the State Department, Amnesty International and others confirm this egregious violation of human rights. Why won't he release these people if he truly wants peaceful negotiations? What guarantee do Fano and others have of living in peace if they negotiate with Abiy, knowing that peaceful activists and journalists languish in his oppressive prisons? The ambassador's indifference and silence only add insult to the injury. The ambassador is fully aware of the atrocities taking place, yet he shamefully fails to uphold basic diplomatic standards that serve US interests and the well-being of the entire Horn of Africa region. He should take the time to read his own government's report on the Abiy government, which details shocking violations including arbitrary or unlawful killings, including extrajudicial executions, disappearances, cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment by the government, harsh and life-threatening prison conditions, arbitrary arrest or detention, serious abuses in conflict, such as unlawful civilian deaths, enforced disappearances, and forcible civilian population transfers. Violations of freedom of expression and media freedom, including violence against journalists, unjustified arrests, and censorship. Restrictions on internet freedom. Interference with the freedom of peaceful assembly and association, including restrictive laws on civil society organizations, government corruption, restrictions or harassment of human rights organizations, gender-based violence, including rape and sexual violence, crimes targeting racial or ethnic minority groups. The large Amhara community in swing states is likely to strongly react to the Biden administration's ill-intentioned policies particularly evident in the ambassador's indifference and contempt towards their concerns. The ambassador's apparent partiality towards Abiy Ahmed's party could provoke significant backlash among Amhara and other Ethiopian voters in critical swing states. This situation has the potential to sour their perception of the administration and impact future political support.